Hi everyone, how's it going? I'm doing all right, uh, just adjusting to this new lifestyle of working from home and being at home all the time. And I feel like it is creating a slightly new mindset over time. Uh, but then at the same time, it's, it's not all that much is changing for me since I'm somebody who likes to spend a lot of time at home anyway. And, you know, and I feel really lucky and fortunate um, to be able to work from home and that I have a, a fairly nice home that there's space enough for my partner and I both to, to work here in separate rooms. And so I feel really lucky um, for, for that reason. But at the same time, I feel a bit alienated from all this pressure that's online that it's like we have to find a new skill or you have to start a new project of interacting with people online and and I don't feel that much pressure to do that like you know I, I you know whatever people need to do to cope that's that's totally fine and, and up to them and and uh, and that's great but um, but for me you know I don't feel the pressure to learn a new language or to to make a sourdough starter I'm I'm just sort of fine reading books as as I am and of course every once in a while I have a slightly anxious afternoon and you know and I feel slightly stressed out and I'm having more nightmares um during the evenings than than usual but uh but uh, and I'll find myself in the middle of the afternoon just wandering around the flat in my pajama bottoms stuffing uh, cereal in my mouth <laughs> um you know uh, but but at the same time it's it's you know things are pretty much carrying on just as normal so um so so yeah I'm I think I'm doing okay overall uh uh, and uh, yeah, just been reading a lot. So I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in March. I've probably been reading slightly more than usual, but then at the same time, yeah, I get anxious and want to look at the news or just feel like I, I need to escape by watching some silly program or something. But at the same time, yeah, still um, getting lots of reading done. So uh, so as I talked about at the end of my last re reading wrap up, I uh, had started Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mendes tell and I've finished this now and uh, yeah and it was a great journey I think it's a much more concentrated book as a lot of people say than Wolf Hall and that it just focuses on Anne Boleyn's death and her execution you know her her downfall quite like rapid downfall and uh, and so in that way it feels a much more concentrated book and it is a shorter book than Wolf Hall was and uh, yeah and I, I but I enjoy this accumulation of feeling like there are more ghosts around Thomas Cromwell and Henry VIII as um, and how Henry VIII's health is sort of deteriorating noticeably and uh, he's becoming slightly more bloated and uh, and more desperate in in his actions and Cromwell finds himself trapped in this in Henry's system of, of just sort of trying to accommodate whatever Henry wants uh, and uh, yeah so it's, it's quite interesting seeing this uh, depiction of a crazy monarch figure in in a time when we have our own sort of uh, <laughs> bloated political leaders who are all about their self-aggrandizement rather than what is the the best thing for their nation so I'm finding a surprising relevancy in this historical novel and and series and yeah and um and so I I am eager when I finished it I was all you know it was just at the time of the publication of the mirror and the light and I was so eager to to start this and you know and 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 I don't think it is wrong to get caught up in the buzz and want to be one of the first people to to have read a, a new novel especially in a big epic series like this but then at the same time I started reading this and it was you know giving me the same thing Hilary Mantel is great at a great opening and uh, and it has her beautiful poetic language as well as yeah this this very atmospheric sense of the the period but then it this novel does feel more in the line of wolf hall and that it's very detailed and um so so i haven't finished reading this i only read maybe about 40 or 50 pages and then i was like you know what i'm not quite in the mood for this now you know and i i feel like it 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 um it's sort of gone to the detriment that uh that i've had this marathon of reading wolf hall and then bring up the bodies and uh that i just i don't know if i'm ready for another 800 and whatever pages of of this so i set this aside for the time being i i 
am eager to go back to it and finish reading it. I might do it in April, but uh, who knows um, when when I'll get to it. I definitely do want to read it at some point, but yeah, just maybe not quite immediately and uh, want to read some other things in the meantime. So uh, so yeah, I, I have been reading other book prize books um, from uh, mostly from the Booker International Prize. And uh, very soon there's going to be the International Prize uh, shortlist announcement in just a couple of days time. So I'll, I'll give my in a, in a little while, I'll give my predictions of what I think might be on the shortlist for, for that prize. But I have been reading some other uh, books from book prizes as well. Um, including Things We Say in the Dark by Kirsty Logan, which is a collection of short stories uh, which was listed for the Dylan Thomas Prize uh, this year. And wait, oh my gosh, I'm so confused. Was it the Dylan Thomas Prize or the Rathbones Folio Prize? I think it was the Dylan Thomas Prize. Like, oh, I'm just getting so mixed up because I'm <laughs> following all these different book prizes. But anyway, it doesn't matter because uh, this is <laughs> um, this is a great short story collection. I've read a um, fiction by Kirsty Logan before, and it's her typical style that she uh, will sort of do these rewritings of fairy tales, usually with a very dark edge to them. So if that's your kind of fiction. These stories, it's the whole book, the way it's constructed is, is so clever because there's individual stories, which um, some of them are ghost stories about sort of haunted houses or these twists on fairy tales uh, like uh, Snow White and uh, and uh, Hansel and Gretel and those sorts of tales. Um, but then uh, also there's an overarching narrative to the whole book in that there's before each story, there's a short snippet of a writer who's on a uh, in a cabin in Iceland writing these stories, and uh, and at first it seems that that uh, that writer seems very close to Kirsty Logan, but as the the book develops and is you read more of these very short snippets before each story, you see that it morphs into something much different and um, something uh, yeah, much wilder and darker than, than that. And so I really enjoy how there's this sort of ongoing tale throughout the book, if you read it chronologically, uh, that you get as well as these individual stories, which are obviously self-contained and, and uh, have their own meaning. And so, yeah, and a lot of the stories um, explore uh, sort of lesbian being relationships or the abuse of women. Um, there's a very powerful story at the end, um, which involves a, a kidnapping of a, of a woman and um, takes the it takes a much stronger sort of realist type tone and brings it back to the real world in that uh, I think a lot of, you know, sometimes these sort of retellings of fairy tales can get a bit... Um, uh, fanciful and and seem more just yeah sort of for their own sake but uh, there are some stories in here which brings it really back to the real world and that how these are about serious issues as well as being very playful and creative in retelling these tales or um, yeah giving a different angle on these classic stories um, some of the there was there was one tale that's like about a female fight club that I, I really enjoyed and it was a really interesting way of looking at relationships and then there was another story which was interest really interesting from a structural point of view in that the actual story itself was very short it was just a few paragraphs long and was a very nice tale but then um, there were annotations and notes at the bottom of the page which gave a greater explanation for each detail in the story which was much darker and and uh, and so I love how it shows that duality of how there are sort of tales behind the tales that that we tell yeah I think she's a very clever writer I was so glad to to finally read this new collection by her and uh, yeah it has a really gorgeous cover so I'd highly recommend this book um, whatever prize it was nominated for <laughs> and uh, then I read uh, even though I was very excited about the women's prize long list I've only read one book from that list since the announcement was made I had read a couple books from the list previously um, just naturally before but uh, but yeah one I was most eager to get to was Actress by Anne Enright um, just because I love Anne Enright's writing and I love the the subject matter and the setup for this story it's kind of the perfect novel for me in that um, it's it's about a, a woman writing about her mother who uh, named Catherine Adele who 
was a famous Irish actress, and uh, it's a fictional story. But uh, but yeah, it it imagines that sort of landscape of um, sort of mid twentieth century in Hollywood and um, acting in theaters in Ireland and the the and films in Ireland. And uh, and so yeah, it's her um, her mother died at a relatively early age, and so now she's almost the same age as her mother when her mother died, and so she's reflecting on her mother's life and her relationship with her, um, which was quite complicated and uh, rocky, and uh, and so talking about that whole relationship and and uh, and yeah, and I just I just it, I just adored this novel. It was it was. I, I expected I would love it, and I did love it. And uh, even though, yeah, I, I was still surprised by some of the things in it and the points of view in it, and uh, and just reveled in the storytelling of it. Uh, and N. Wright is so great at writing dialogue and these very witty characters and a very low key sense of humor. So I appreciated it for for all of that, but also as as a way of looking at the history of Ireland of the past 50 years from a different point of view. There's a lot in it about the meaning of Irish national identity because the um, her mother is seen as this almost like prototype of the uh, the the Irish country woman and she's almost made to play this role. But then she in herself um feels like she's quite different from that and and she sort of gets pegged as playing this particular role of an Irish woman which I feel like uh, a lot of Irish people who emigrate from the country and out into the world find themselves you know getting sort of stuck in this sense of uh, national identity um, even though there's obviously multifaceted parts of their personality and and so yeah the, the way it looks at identity in that way I think is really interesting as well as the relationships obviously between a mother and a daughter and uh, yeah and the the role of women in society and so yeah I, I just adored this novel and yeah I think it's it's so great but yeah so to get on to a lot of the um, Booker International Prize books that that I've been reading um, I read five and currently reading another one you know the big one that, that everyone is is getting to so um, I, and I was really surprised by a lot of these and that some of them that I was expecting to absolutely love I had slight issues with and then other ones which I didn't have such great expectations for I uh, I was pleasantly surprised by so um so that's a sort of wonderful thing about prize reading that even though I expected to have certain reactions to some of the books I found myself having a very different reaction to some of them so there's a discomfort of discomfort of evening uh, which is a, a debut novel and I didn't love this book as much as I was hoping I would. I I thought I would be much more enraptured by the imagery and language that was used, which is really interesting. It's a very different point of view. Uh, but at the same time, I yeah just didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. So it's about a um, an adolescent girl named Joss and follows a couple years of her life in her adolescence. Um, and at the beginning of the novel, her brother dies in a tragic accident. And so it's sort of about the, the grief of uh, her and her family over a period of time after his death. Uh, but then also about her development, um, her sexual and uh, mental development um, growing up on a farm, on a cow, uh, a dairy farm. <laughs> um, uh, and and uh, yeah, her very strange relationships with her brother and sister, um, which become quite sexual in nature, um, which is quite uncomfortable to, to read about. And also about her um, issues that she, um, she, she has constipation for a long time. And there's a lot of detail about her constipation and uh, and and really like graphic detail about that and I'm not somebody who's very prudish but I just felt like uh, I don't need to, to read any more detail about her uh, trying to go to the bathroom it just uh, like uh, it's just a bit gross and uh, and I I know it has a bigger symbolic meaning in in her in talking about her her grief and sort of pent up emotions that not being able to uh, to talk about them, but yeah, at the same time, I'm just like oh, I don't want to to, to read about that anymore. Um, so yeah, I I can I appreciated this this novel and the way it it uh, it gave a different point of view, but at the same time, I just 
Yeah, didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping to, though it did really remind me strongly of another novel, um, which isn't all that well known anymore, um, called Two Serious Ladies by Jane Bowles. Um, this this uh, novel from s- sort of the early to mid uh, 20th century, I think it was wrote. And and uh, and it, the sensibility of it, of the discomfort of evening, really reminded me of this novel in that it's somebody who feels things very intensely and goes through these ritual practices to try to expunge herself from uh, these these yeah pent up emotions that she has and so one of the the, um, the main characters in this yeah has these sort of pseudo religious exercises that she forces her friend to participate in 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 the same way that the main character of the discomfort of new evening um does with her friend as well um in a way that's very uncomfortable and uh, and and uh, and difficult to read about uh, so, uh, yeah, so I, I really appreciated how it reminded me of this. And I kind of wonder if the author of this had, had ever read this novel, because, yeah, it just really reminded me of that, even though uh, it, it, you know, she does have a very original voice. And, and obviously, there's a lot of differences between these books. But, uh, but yeah. Um, and also I have to say overall that I really didn't like the ending of this novel. I felt like it, it suffers from that thing that a lot of debut novels does and that it's kind of over the top and uh, and uh, yeah and just didn't need to, to go where it did. I'm not gonna you know give any spoilers, but I just felt like it was sort of unnecessary. So yeah, kind of uh, I mean, as with all like prize reading, I feel like I'm being more critical about this book than I would be if I just read it on its own outside of a book prize context. Um, but because I am reading it up against other books, I feel like I'm being more nitpicky about it. So, you know, I've, I'm definitely glad I read it. It's it's worth reading. But uh, but yeah, I just didn't enjoy it as, as much as I was hoping to. Uh, then I, I read uh, The Adventures of China Iron by Gabriela Cab- Cabazon Camara. And uh, and uh, this, I I really enjoyed the playfulness and imaginativeness of of this it's sort of a road trip across Argentina during a time when the the country is sort of forming into a new kind of nation, and uh, and the uh, the the tensions between uh, uh, colonial presence in the country and uh, people who are native of the country and then the the gauchos of of the country um so it's a it's a retelling of an epic poem um from from that time about a great gaucho um uh, who uh who was seen sort of as a leader of of the country and amongst the uh, voices of the the sort of underdogs of of the country and uh and i wasn't aware of this poem before reading this this book i i just sort of read up on it uh as i was reading the novel and i was sort of glad i i did just as to have a context and um and so the um the the main character of it she is the the wife of of that gaucho and and uh, and uh, who has been sort of cast off and um, as he's left to go on other adventures she's just sort of left on her own with the children of him and so she goes on an adventure of her own across the country along with a Scottish woman who is living in the country and um, and uh, another man who is a, a dairy farmer um, who has a herd of cattle and and so they go across the country together and experience a number of different locations so it's very episodic in certain ways uh, but then it gives this powerful sense of the the natural world of the country and her interactions with their and her own discovery of her own identity um, her sexual awakening as she has an affair with this Scottish woman that she's traveling with uh, but then also her sensibility of what she wants in her life the the kind of life she wants to settle into and um so so yeah i really enjoyed it it has a slightly comic edge but also a very serious edge in that it depicts some instances of basically slavery of a number of gauchos that have been enslaved and if they don't submit to the will of the the colonial forces then they are executed and um so there are some very serious sides to it but then i so I enjoyed most of the book but then I felt like the last maybe third of it just became a bit too whimsical for me and a bit too it like she um so she she finds a group of uh of Indians uh in South America and lives with them in this 
very harmonious existence, um, which felt a bit too Pocahontas to me. It was just a little too idealized and, and, uh, and yeah, it felt like it almost, uh, it's, it's, it, it was almost borderline racist in, in just how idealized it was, because I feel like if you take any group of people and show them in this hyper um, idealized way, it's almost as racist as, you know, portraying a group of people in a, in a, in very general terms in a negative way, um, you know, and so uh so yeah i i had sort of issues with that and and um and even though you know i feel like it's obviously it would be wonderful to to live in a world where it's it, there's this great harmony in a community and uh, and you know and everyone's happy and in a way i appreciate that as a as a as a narrative that's um about a lesbian relationship that it could provide a uh, you know this happy alternative um in a historical novel, which, you know, a lot of historical novels that feature LGBT characters, it's a big tragic end. And, um, and I appreciate that she didn't have to force this tragic end on, on her character. But then at the same time, I felt like it was so over the top and almost a bit ridiculous that I just couldn't really buy into it. So yeah, it's another novel that I really enjoyed. I'm glad I read it, but I, yeah, I had issues um, with that. So didn't enjoy it probably as much as I was hoping to. Uh, I also read Till by Daniel Kelman, another historical novel that is looking at this period of um, the Thirty Years' War um, in Germany and in different countries in Europe, and um, follows a a uh, mythical figure who's um, who's named Till Uhlenspiegel. Spiegel, who's been portrayed in a number of German fables and um, folklore. He's a sort of trickster character. And, um, and it sort of begins as almost a biographical retelling of his life as, as he, um, he, uh, he's raised on this, this mill. And then he, um, his, his father is accused of being a warlock and is put on trial for that. And, um, and I really enjoyed that whole process of the trial and, um, and his development as, as he dabbles in, in uh, the, the slight almost occult practices and then joins a troop of a traveling troop of um of a sort of carnival and and learn some skills through that and he um yeah I, I felt like he was presented as this very compelling character um who is is very determined on his own survival and so I thought he was very sympathetic in that way um but then the the novel sort of morphs into something Quite different from just a biographical account of his life and dabbles more into the the history of um of the period and and really focuses on the life of elizabeth stewart and her husband as they became the king and queen of the the prussian empire but only for a very short amount of time um before uh, they were they were removed forcibly removed from that that royal robe role and so um they they're known as the winter king and queen because that's only the amount of time that their their royalty sort of lasted and uh and so yeah it it morphs much more into a story about their lives and some of the other um lives of of significant figures during the 30 years war which is a whole period of time that i really don't know much about that historical age and so sort of like with hillary mantel i felt a bit alienated because i'm sure there was a lot of specific references to particular wars or particular historical events that i just wasn't personally that aware of but uh but because of the narrative and the style that he told it i just didn't really mind so much i just enjoyed the, the storytelling for the sake of it as as he was he was telling it so like with a lot of historical novels i i didn't feel that sense of alienation or that I needed to constantly go to Wikipedia as I as I do often feel when reading historical novels just to understand all of the references um but at the same time it made it a slightly uneven novel in that it changes from a story so much about Till to these other historical figures and really I feel like Elizabeth Stewart emerges as the real heroine of this novel and the main character of it more so than Till. And she was an absolutely fascinating character. And I've left this wanting to know more about her life and read some biographical accounts or even other fictional accounts about her because, yeah, she, she was just a really 
fascinating character and she came from British royalty and then married into European royalty and became a, a, a royal figure in her own right but then was lived in exile for most of her life and she had many children um, but she was also very bookish she um, and a very intelligent and learned um, person and so yeah it was just a really fascinating person so um, if you know of any other good biographical accounts or good fictional accounts about her that you'd like to recommend to me please let me know in the the comments below because I would like to to read more about her. Um, so I did really enjoy this novel overall, um, even though I recognize it's probably an uneven slight reading experience. And I know um, hearing about other people's accounts of reading this um, for the prize uh, that, um, that yeah, they, they had slight issues with, with that aspect of it. But, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it overall. And I'd really like to read more by Daniel Kelman. Um, this is the first book I've read by him. He's um, quite a famous German author and has written other like really well known novels so um so yeah I'd really like to read more by him um I also read The Other Name by John Fossey which I've mentioned a couple videos recently and I, I was was um I I thought I would appreciate this novel but I didn't know that I would love it as much as I did and I did really just fall into this novel I think it was slightly the right time to be reading it because it's such a meditative novel, a very slow novel. There's not a, really not a lot of plot at all. Um, it's uh, it's more about the just experience and the thoughtfulness of it. And I really enjoyed that as an alternative during this period of time when I feel like everything is happening very fast and I want to be looking at the news all the time. I just enjoyed, yeah, just sinking into this and thinking about... Uh, things in, in this self-consciously deep way. And so it concerns the life of an artist um, who is <laughs> who has made a new painting, which is basically just two lines, a brown line and a pink line, which intersect with each other on the canvas. And that's all it is. And basically the plot of the whole novel is him uh, mulling over this painting that he's created and whether it's any good or not and whether um, it's as he describes has a sort of light shining from behind it he he thinks that the best paintings in art have this sort of light in them which can't be seen and known um, but which just sort of emerge from behind the facade of it and um, and so yeah it's it's almost like a repast to this um, this criticism of a lot of modern art that it's something that a child could could have done and that not a lot of thought went into it. This is over 300 pages of somebody thinking really deeply about a painting. And it's very dense pages. Um, you can look at at, uh, at how it's these big blocks of text and it's sort of run on sentences, which, um, which, you know, it's not all one single sentence, but there's a lot of very long sentences, you know, there's not, not many natural breaks where you're just like, oh, I'm going to go make a cup of tea now after I finish this sentence, because it's just going on and on and on. But, um, but I, I just got into the whole mental flow of, of that, of how, um, obviously, it's not just about his painting, but he's reflecting on his life and, and his feelings of guilt and memory and, and, uh, and, it explores that in a really fascinating way and it's not a straightforward realist narrative but how um he has um in the city there's a doppelganger of him of a double of him who's has his same name and is also a painter but who um who is in but much worse shape and that he's an alcoholic and the the city side of him is sort of an alcoholic and and uh, and is is um has deteriorating mental and physical health and um, and he goes to try to assist him and they they seem almost two sides of the same co coin of how he has all these repressed emotions and feelings which he can't yeah deal with and um and so the the narrative is sort of showing how he is forced to deal with that in that he'll be driving along and he'll witness a man and a woman who are on a playground and and going through these weird almost ritualistic experiences with each other in a way that it could be he could be looking at a memory of his or or a fantasy of his uh and and it it, it sort of blends the um the boundaries between reality and dreams and yeah so that it's so fascinating how it does that and um but from a really dark side too there's also a woman he encounters who no matter how many times she reminds him of her name and their relationship with each other, um, he can't he can't recall what they are. So there's a slight misogyny from that point of view, and and I feel like it's almost exploring 
the mechanics of that misogyny in an interesting way. Um, or you could say it's indulging in them, depending on the point of view you take. So I, I think it's really interesting from that point of view. But it's another book, much like the, the novel the, Dis the Discomfort of Evening, um, I felt very ambivalent about the very end of this novel, like literally the last few pages. It goes somewhere very different. And again, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but yeah, it, it goes somewhere very unexpected. And uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I feel really ambivalent and and slightly uncomfortable with it. Um, I think it's really interesting from one perspective in that you could almost look over the whole narrative and give a whole different interpretation of it based on those the very last few pages of this novel. But at the same time, it feels slightly over the top and maybe unnecessary. So yeah, if, if you've read this novel to the very end um, and because it's quite an endurance test in that it's very dense text and yeah not a lot happens so I, I know that it's totally not a novel for everyone but um, but if you did get to the end of it and want to discuss the very ending of it with me I'd be really interested in that because yeah I, I've I have very mixed feelings about it, so yeah, I'd, I'd really like to discuss it. But um, but yeah, I just really enjoyed this novel overall and um, really appreciated it, especially during this time. So I'd re really like to read more by um, by this author who's who's very well acclaimed in his native country of Norway and internationally um, as well. And I also read Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin, and this is a novel which I was sort of expecting to, to love a bit more than I did. I really enjoyed it, uh, but at the same time, it, it um, yeah, just didn't go quite as far as I was expecting it to. So it's about how uh, the, the the world has been swept by uh, by this, this sort of craze for this new technology toy robot called uh, Kentuckys and um, and which is a toy which uh, is is a uh, is is made in the form of these soft cuddly toys of various different animals or mythical figures, um, but each has a camera attached in it. So its owner um, is watched all day by an anonymous um, viewer who is somewhere else in the world and they have no way of contacting them or knowing who is watching them, but. Uh, but uh, but but yeah. So um, so you can either be a viewer or you can um, you can own one of these toys and um, and uh, so it shows the perspectives of a number of different characters around the world who are in one of these two positions and uh, and the weird relationships it makes um, through this new medium of this new technology and uh, so yeah, it's a lot of play on um, the age of social media and our um, and our relationship with uh with yeah with people around the world through things like youtube and and uh so so this sort of format and i feel like there's been a lot of think pieces about the the wider meaning of uh the psychological impact and social impact of of all these new connections we can have with people online uh but at the same time um i feel like this hasn't been explored all that deeply in a lot of fiction so it's quite interesting that she has taken on this subject matter and and it's quite creative and and fun how she explores it how there's a lot of negative sides to it but there's some positive sides to it as well and and i appreciate how she gives a slightly balanced view while at the same time you know a lot Lot of the experiences go in a very dark and twisted way because that's a characteristic of Samantha Shrublin's fiction and uh, and uh, yeah and, and some of the tales are very eerie and and creepy and, and so I enjoyed the suspensefulness of that and um, as well as the the humor and emotion that came out of a lot of characters finding how there were aspects of their identity which emerge through these interactions which they didn't expect and characteristics of them sort of come out through their interactions with this unknown viewer um, who is in their life or or from viewing other people's lives anonymously and sort of getting this voyeuristic experiences of, of their life. And uh, so, yeah, I really appreciated how it all did that. But I sort of wish she'd like pushed it a bit further and uh, yeah, I just didn't come out with any strong overall sense or message um, from the novel. And and maybe that's not such a bad thing. Maybe it's just a, gives an, 
impressionistic experience of, of this whole medium. Um, and it did make me, you know, meditate and think on my own experiences of this whole weird um, thing of, of projecting myself out into the world through YouTube and through my blog and stuff and, and forming connections with people from all corners of the world, which is largely a really wonderful experience, but also is, yeah, quite a weird and strange new kind of form of communication and relationships that it, it creates so so yeah I enjoyed that it, it gave space to think about all of that but um but I wish it had gone sort of a bit further so that's my overall thinking and feeling of of this novel uh so yeah so that's all what I've read and I've I've finally gone back to reading the eighth life and just diving into this great epic and I felt like too much time has gone by um from the couple hundred pages I read before so I need to go back and, and I started rereading it from the very beginning and I'm about 150 pages in. Um, so I have a long way to go and I know this is gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna finish reading this before the shortlist of the, the prize is announced on Thursday. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm just enjoying um, the, the epic experience of it and the uh, the episodic nature of the tales of this this family over this long period of time in Georgian history so and and European history so uh, so yeah I'm enjoying that and uh, yeah so the like I said the shortlist is going to be announced soon so taking into account that I haven't read the entire long list for the Booker International Prize but um, I, I haven't read these books yet and obviously haven't finished the Eighth Life yet but uh, uh, so I this isn't you know an authoritative sort of prediction but just yeah my wild guess on what might appear on the shortlist um just to make a fun sort of stab of of what might win um i would guess that these six books will be shortlisted for the novel which um would make quite a contrast between it's all um the spines are all red and uh, and blue and black um for this and uh yeah so obviously i haven't read the enlightenment of the green gauge tree um though it's one i'm really looking forward to um and hoping to read soon but yeah i'm really hoping to see hurricane season on it i would really like to see the other name on it just because i feel like it's a book not a lot of people will pick up and it'll encourage people to try reading it um it's probably a very different reading experience from what uh, a lot of people um read and um the memory piece police i just love this novel when i read it a few months ago and uh yeah it's um yoko agawa is just great in how the philosophical look she gives at uh, at the world and this deep like psychological look at um at yeah society and uh, yeah so really enjoyed that um again yeah I was really surprised and delighted by Till and uh, the eighth life is just a great epic which already you know having only read 150 or 200 pages um I I think is such an absorbing um story for for such a long novel so um so yeah hoping to see these six on Thursday but we'll see when the the announcement is is made so let me know your thoughts in the comments below um if you've been reading anything from these various book prizes that i've been talking about or um if you have any thoughts on these specific books um outside of that whole context um or if you just want to let me know how you're doing in general um i think we should all just yeah be checking in with each other a bit more how we're dealing with this intense period of isolation and uh yeah whether you're um you've been reading more or less um yeah how you've been dealing with with things in general or if you've read anything really good lately that you would recommend uh let me know in the comments below and uh yeah so i'll put links down below to my full reviews um if you want to know more of my thoughts about all these books and uh hope you're doing well i will chat to you again soon take care everyone